got a fantastic thing to, piece to show you. <laughs> Mucking about in my oddities tray and I had this that, from a CD-ROM. I don't know. And then I put these antenna on. I sent a picture to the people in Florida that have made it and they held a sales meeting to show their stuff. What can to be more careful with their products <laughs> and to bear in mind that the other side of the pond there was a little man making funny funny creatures from their <laughs> floats Shall we go through to, to, the, to the Curious Kingdom? My grandmother taught me to beachcomb. She used to say, look for a bit of pencil, ducky. Get your eye in. I found all sorts of things. You know, wallets, watches, tools, none of which I wanted. But I'd go back and say, you know, I found three bits of pencil there. <laughs> Good ducky, you go back, you keep looking. And yeah, got my eye. You see these floats? And there's one down at the bottom there. That's got evidence of shark's teeth. So every piece of material tells a story. Is that a big part of it, Sid? Your, your enjoyment of it, the fact that everything has a story. Yes, oh gosh. Um, I, I mean, I do think of every component as being a complete work of art in itself. I, and then, of course, I start to interfere. But I don't, I don't change, I don't cut colour anything. But I simply do in, continue to introduce pieces together uh, to see what happens. All I do is, is introduce, I'm, I'm a cross between a, a scrap man and a dating agency. That's, that's all I do. And I don't want to blow it by trying to be clever. I'm not clever. I've got a very big imagination, Russell. That's it. I thought this had fantastic movement in it. Absolutely flowed. And I was, spending a bit of time looking at some of the tribes in Africa. And I suddenly saw a Maasai walking across the desert. I had this red and I thought, yes, that's that searing heat and gave him a staff, you know, and they leap, they're wonderful. So this is my spring range. This is springtime on the farm. That's my spring chicken. Got to watch that sting. I'm not sure what that is. And that's lovely little spring. Look at that. <laughs> so this is my um, extraordinary feats. It should be F-E-A-T-S. This is called the Chiropodist. Again, burnt lot. That's um, on thin ice. That's part of these uh, extraordinary feats jobs. This is my Roman centurion. Roaming, not Roman. And that started with this, I think it's an inner soul. <laughs> so this is switched on. I found this uh, rubber heel. It's the remains of a flip-flop. That's a piece of shoe, shoe leather. There's, look, size eight. <laughs> and there, look, I've been a bit extravagant using two pieces of shell. Some nails from a pallet. Oh, and, th and then this, this burnt plastic base. You might like to see. Oh. How the hell does that wash out? But it did. 
And all I've done is put this little flag on so it looks like a three funnel vessel. Can you see in there? I traced it to Hamburg to a shipbuilders. Nice pugwash. <laughs> It's an early boat, a tin can with a piece of shoe. Lockdown in Wales was very severe, and, and at one stage we, we were actually 172 days in between getting to the coast, to Beachcombe. And then when we did, all we found were fires, and uh, that was very disappointing. I was finding where they'd had fires, plastic had got involved, pebbles, and they were, it was poisoning the beach, so the, the wildlife was beginning to struggle. I don't know, for some reason, we find a lot of toothbrushes on the beach. This is called a brush with death. I, I don't know whether perhaps people have picnics and the very self-conscious ones brush their teeth afterwards. I don't know, but... And it's got, I mean, it's been well worn. This is Mike. It's called The Collector. I don't know whether he'd be very pleased, but... Yeah. So that's my collector, and that's me. So I think, Mike, you're the better looking of the two. never be a cabinet maker or a craftsperson because I'm completely impractical. I don't have a telephone. I, I don't, wouldn't know how to work it. I only learned to email because of Mike, because I used to send in um, little reports of what I was doing. <laughs> Sid, hello? Mr Obama, I'm really busy. Yes. Well, I'm pleased your economy is making a bit of a comeback, but we are seriously busy here, beachcombing and recording our humble activities, so I'll make sure you're invited to the show. I don't know how to put the television on. I, I don't want to know, and I quite like inconvenience. If I didn't, believe me, I wouldn't be making this work. When I first met Mike, he was talking about people using found objects and he said to me have you, have you seen the piece that Picasso made using handlebars I had I had this in store uh, and I don't know what it's from I got absolutely no idea but I always thought it was wonderful horns halfway up a mountain Louis found a bicycle saddle the remains of and that is it so I was then able to do this is my version of, of what that bloke Picasso made. When you burn driftwood, the chemicals that are given off, are, are, they mix, they're, they're actually carcinogenic. Actually, now, I start to see semi-precious stones in the colours of the burnt plastic and the pebbles. But I then started working more with burnt wood because what gets left is the hardest part of the timber. Yeah. And it's so, it's like a, an old person. Uh, you start to see getting old, all the crinkles and the, you know, we start off square and we end up spherical if we've lived a bit. And um, that's what happens with the burnt wood. So, that's an example of you've got to persevere. You can't just write off burnt material, but it's worth it because you get such strong characters, I think. You know, I'm not interested in the science of birds, but I just love the character and not just birds now. You know, I've had this fantastic focus now and it, this is all I do. And there aren't many days that I don't get involved 
in interpreting these found objects. So you've now got lizards, insects, hair, wolf, even things called humans. They're the dangerous ones, of course. People have firework parties on the beach and I go and salvage the sparkler wire. That's my little creatures. I found that collection of pebble and cement, whatever it is, on the beach. I mean, it looks a bit like General de Gaulle. But can you see that coat? Or is it just me? I can see a coat. Here's his arm. Can you see that fish with the fin? we we'll have to dig it out. That's Tuna Turner. <laughs> you know, I'd, I'd love to get together with Nick Park and say, you know, we could make some stories up, couldn't we? I quite like the idea of doing a, a ch children's story and encouraging them in turn to go and, and look and find treasures. Louis, he'd watched a documentary by Sir David Attenborough. He stood up and said, I may be small, but I'm determined to make a difference. So he did some designs. I put them in, in the shop. We sold nine, nine and a half thousand of those. That's how we got to know Lee Durrell, because he sent the money to Jersey to help raise awareness for endangered species. And he did live BBC interviews and radio. Yes, yeah, so he did that particular one when he was six, and that was, that was published when he was eight. That's always what it's been about, animals. We got to the coast one evening in winter. There'd been a storm, and we went from the house down to the estuary, coming back and by moonlight we saw this piece of wood and it was 92 inches long anyway we turned it over and it said persevere but it was like a message from my grandmother persevere keep going i'm still picking up little bits of pencil <laughs> if you can hear me <laughs> i'm still trying <laughs> <laughs>